timeline animation in Photoshop using squash and stretch. Create a new Photoshop document and you want to select the, the film and video default under preset and select HDV 1080p-29.97 hit OK. Now go down to create video timeline and click. And here's your timeline. I'm going to save this document and the format should be Photoshop. Make sure you save it in the appropriate directory or folder so you can find it at another time. I'm going to save this as a different document so I don't replace the one I already created. I'm going to go up to Layer, Video Layer, and New Blank Video Layer. You'll notice that it shows up in my Layers palette and in the video timeline. I've selected the pre-existing layer, and in that area I have a background that I created which I just put into place. You'll notice the upper layer, layer 1, the video uh, timeline layer, the blank, is a transparent layer. So we're going to draw our first circle on this transparent layer. I'm just using uh, the brush tool with a fine setting and a good dark color. And here we can enable onion skins. And here's onion skin settings, settings, and I'd recommend you keep it at those default settings. We're going to advance the timeline one frame, and you'll notice the previous frame is visible, but it's faint. That's the onion skin. I'm going to pull a guide just so I could get an idea of where the ball is going to hit the surface. And I recommend locking your guides. That's my area where the ball is going to bounce. All right, turn on your skin off so you can see the actual color. back on so I can estimate where to draw the next figure. Make sure I'm on the appropriate layer. And that's the video uh, layer. That's the layer number one. Oh, wrong tool. We don't want to use selection. We just want to use our paintbrush. I'm drawing the circle a little below just to suggest movement. Feel free to draw as, as loose and sketchy as you like. And that's the previous and just scrubbing it so you can see how it appears in different frames. And it helps you understand the animation and the movement. And I'm just going to throw in a shadow. The shadow will vary depending on the distance the ball is from the surface and how wide the ball is. As the ball squashes, it gets a little wider. And of course, as it uh, compresses and stretches, it gets thinner and the shadow adjusts accordingly.
and we'll draw this next frame. Throw in the shadow. And advance it to the next frame. Notice now the shadow is touching the ball, so it's now hitting the surface. And now the next ball we draw will be slightly squashed. So it's going to expand a little bit, so we're going to go beyond. And of course the mass needs to stay the same, so we have to adjust accordingly, so the height will be a little lower. And let's squash this ball even further. Notice it's expanding beyond the previous image. That's the beauty of onion skins. It allows us to deceive our previous images, very much like tracing paper. Now the ball is going to start moving upwards. And in doing so, it changes shape. Instead of being wider, it's now going to start moving back to its normal shape and then eventually become taller. So it's going to stretch. Okay, we're just going to kind of whip through this and speed things up so I don't bore you to tears. Okay, we're ready to take a look at this. And I'd like to loop it, but I'm going to have to shorten the uh, timeline in order for it to loop because right now the length is longer than my animation. So I can scroll all the way over to the right, shorten it this way, and do it incrementally. But as you can see, this is a little tedious. I can reduce the scale or the size, and that's only relative. It doesn't actually shorten it. It just allows you to see the entirety of it. And you'll notice as I hover over, the little icon appears where I can drag and shorten the length of these video timelines or layers.
Now I can scrub it and you can get a look at the animation. I turned onion uh, skin off so you don't see the onions. And I'm going to create a new layer. I want to add some color. It's going to be a blank video layer. It's underneath my existing one. So I'm going to go back to my brush tool and fill in these layers. I think I'll title them just for clarification. The beauty of coloring separately is it gives you a lot more flexibility and your line work uh, will always uh, be separate. That's a technique I prefer. You may prefer to color on the same layer. I'm going to uh, create like a neutral uh, green. Not too neutral. It's got some saturation. Increase the size of my brush and just really quickly sketch the color in on these layers. I'm coloring it on my very first frame. You'll notice I'm on frame one. Now I'm going to advance to the next frame and color again. I like working loosely because the texture is uh, animated and becomes an interesting aspect and in, in, uh, feel to the piece. Because as the, the animation is played, these different textures and irregularities have a sense of motion and movement. I'm going to adjust my brush. We're ready to play a little basketball and dribble. I hit play and it's on loop so it keeps repeating. Not too bad. I'm going to initialize a video export by clicking on that little icon you saw down there. And you have a couple options. I'm just selecting a uh, a QuickTime format and saving it uh, to my uh, hard drive. I'm also going to save a version for web. I'm going to save it as a GIF. And I don't need transparency on, so I'll deselect that. I'm going to hit save. Save it to my folder so I can find it and save again. Let's go check them out. We'll open our GIF and preview and you can see the individual images. And we'll also drag this into Safari so you can see it animate. It's not set on loop when I exported it. That was an oversight of mine. So it's only going to bounce once. And let's take a look at that movie. And hit play. That's it. And thanks. Take care.